What's up guys? I am Kamer Commander. Welcome to Zell Feathers, which is my YouTube channel where I talk about games and anything else that kind of happens to be on my mind. So uh, anyway, I want to show you this um, game I've been playing. Well, actually, I wanted to show you a tutorial for this game I've been playing. This game is called uh, Struct, S-T-R-U-C-K-D, and it's a game that makes games. Um, so it's kind of like a Project Spark or Gary's Mod, if you've heard of that. Um, I haven't played Gary's Mod. I have played a little bit of Project Spark before they actually canceled it. Uh, but yeah, this game is really great because it, it definitely streamlines some things for you. And I'm probably going to make a video about my uh, sort of review on that and help sell you on to getting to try this. But anyway, um, today I'm going to do a tutorial on a sort of a principle in Spark. A struct that will help you make some very awesome stuff and in this case especially buildings so one thing you may have encountered if you're trying to create a game is um, this yeah that's kind of annoying right so yeah I want to put that rock right next to the cliff right here okay that is really annoying I can't quite do that because as soon as it gets close bang it flies up into the air that's of course incredibly infuriating well how do I solve that there's a way so let me show you pop up here, position it, you see that button right there? Boom. That is how you adjust a, um, an item's height. And frankly, that you can use to, um, how should I put it, to create all sorts of complex stuff in there. So if the two th items are not going to fit together or something, you can use that feature in order to force them to put together. So. Here's an example. Say I want to have like a rock on that cliff face. All right, I just put it on top there, slide it in, and there you go. Now I've got a rock in the cliff face that I can jump on in theory. There you go. So you get the idea. That principle can be used all the time to create all sorts of complicated things. And what I want to show you is how you can apply it to making cool architecture, especially uh, fantasy architecture. So again, if you've ever uh, worked in Spark, you probably have probably honestly been impressed by the the number of cool buildings that you have here. These are just fantasy ones here because that's what I have pulled up here. But they've got all sorts of stuff there because the struct is uh, for a bunch of different genres: racing, uh, first-person shooters, uh, RPGs, and that, that sort of thing. So you can make all sorts of kinds of games with that. And then, of course, they got tons of options here. But again, you might have uh, bumped yourself into thinking. Well, is there other ways to create cool stuff? Well, there is, and I've just kind of recently discovered this. I don't claim to be like a super good at it because I've only uh, started working on this for a little while. But I want to show you this cool fantasy cottage that I made and how I did it. And it's using, again, the same principle that I just showed you about sliding things into each other. So you see there's this kind of cool uh, Warcrafty uh, tower there. And of course, it's got an inside, this nice brick facade, or exterior, it's not a facade break this door down because you don't open doors and struct you only break them down <laughs> and you can see there's a bit of an interior here where I could put like a bed and stuff in there I didn't put any in there mainly because you know I just I didn't want to bother and it is a little kind of cramped and of course you can see that the camera is a little tough simply because that's how um, struct works but anyway you get the basic principle so again how did I do this well again I used that same principle that I just showed you with the rock and the uh, the grass so let me demonstrate. So we'll uh, just duplicate this thing. So we just take the tower here. And then I was thinking, well, I kind of want to have some brick exterior. How do I do that? Well, there turns out there is actually a piece that's brick. Uh, you, you know, you could do like a stone exterior like this, like this wall. And that, that does kind of look cool. And you'll see people use that for castles all the time. But that's not uh, what I wanted. And I saw this piece here, which is basically just kind of a garden fence thing. Why is that thing up from the ground? I don't know. I can keep pulling stuff out of, of the inventory here, and it keeps putting it above the ground, and I don't know why. So anyway, so again, I can't quite really fit it in there because um, the house is in the way. But again, if I just position it in the spot, slide it down, and there you go. Just repeat that. Boom got myself my brick exterior. No, again, that's just like a, a brick wall like you're supposed to use for like a, a garden or something, you know, that kind of thing. But I use it as a, a wall, like an actual brick wall. And it has a kind of nice fantasy or medieval 
uh, look there. So again, just kind of get creative. There's, again, a ton of assets you can work with in Struct. So how did I get that um, pillar right there? Well, I took the, um, the other uh, wall piece that comes with it, this thing here, and I just kind of sized it up about like that positioned it to where I kind of wanted it. You can use those dotted line there to position, slid it in, and bam, there you go. There you go, oopsie. So you get the idea, that's how you can make uh, complicated uh, structures that are not actually designed, I'm sorry, not, not uh, an actual asset in the game. So let me just, so that's basically all the technical um, part here, but I want to show you a few other examples here for your inspirational purposes. This is like a nice wooden castle that I built. Um, there's a little historical fact. Most castles actually were wooden. Uh, we just don't have a lot of surviving ones because they were wooden, but the records and such do show that, in fact, they were not made of stone. It's kind of obvious, right, because it's, stone's expensive. So anyway, you can see this is just a, a fake door right here. But you can see it's basically the same thing. So how did I design that? Well, it's the same basic principle. Um, I just took this tower here, and then I took the fence piece. So again, I wanted to have a wooden exterior, and I saw, well, there's this cool fence piece here. Again, it's meant to be used as a fence, but I'm like, why can't I use that for a wall? And I did. Now, where is it? Here we go. Again, it pops up from the, the ground there. I don't know why. Rotate position where you want. Now you see sometimes these things do actually kind of push into each other, but not in this case. So I position where I want it, pull it down, and there you go. Double click, pull it down, and there you go. You get the basic idea. And then you can do the same thing for the arch. So pull out this arch, rotate, pull that here. And again, um, I'm doing this on uh, a computer but all of this principle still applies to a uh, tablet, which is what Struct was built on. And then you just pull the gate here. For some reason, the gate is not appearing, and I don't know why, but uh, yeah, anyway. Uh, or say, we'll just pull out the door there. So again, here's another little tip. That happened, that happened to me twice. That is so weird. It pulls out in the broken form automatically. I don't know why. So that is so weird. It's some weird little bug just a small indie studio that's making this. They only have limited resources, but uh, the game's pretty good even amidst that. So again, just kind of put it in the middle there, size it up, there you go. So in this way, again, you can design pretty cool looking uh, buildings. Now here's also kind of a cool thing that came up when I was designing this thing. Um, if you look in the back here of the keep, which again is that same basic uh, design as the cottage. When you look in the back here, um, there's a kind of a bit of a gap here between the towers on either side and the uh, building. So the way I filled that, of course, is by putting the fence in there. But I also thought, well, that makes kind of an interesting back door like, like this. So it's a cool way you can kind of sneak into the building that way. So sometimes, you know, little happy accidents will come out when you're um, designing buildings. So let's talk, take you to the, uh, the other cool one and we'll just work over here. So this is like a church I designed. And again, using basically the same principle. So I won't go over to that too much here. So again, I took the kind of good tower here. And the reason I, the way I got that steeple again was by uh, taking the cross piece and just kind of sliding it into the top of that building. And then I took the dungeon pieces there to create the walls. Oopsie. So let me show you that. So yeah, I just took these pieces and used them to create the, th the uh, walls. Now, you may notice that these things can't be adjusted in size. However, um, these things can. So you can just pick which one you sort of want. I picked this one because just for a, a stylistic reasons, but again, you can use whatever you want. And of course, I got this cool... Um, walls up here. So yeah, check out this window. So you can build like stained glass windows in much the same way. Let me show you real fast. So take an arch right here. 
then you just gotta fill it with a um, like a box like that. So let me show you where that is. It's in geometry here. They're gonna have a search bar eventually. Um, this is struct 1.0.9, I believe. There's a platform right here, okay? And those things can be colored. So again, just kind of position, make it the size you want. It's already a pretty good size. Slide it down. It's too big. Let me pull it down here. There we go. Double click. Slide it down. And there you go. Now you got your stained glass window. You can color these, of course, if you want a different color. And that's the basic principle. Well, let me take it on the inside just because it's kind of cool. So if you make your buildings big enough, um, you can put interiors in there. Break this door down again. You see I put like benches and things in there and put some furnaces. There's the altar. There's a gap in there. I have to fix that. There you go. It's kind of weird having the, the torches next to the altar. It's a little scary, but whatever. <laughs> All right. So yeah, so that's how you can design the interior of buildings, and you can add more details if you want, but I didn't. Um, and it's actually a good idea not to right away, so that you don't make more work for yourself later. Say if you need to move this building, and you're like, now I've got all these details in there, and it's going to take a, a lot of time to move all that. Yeah, exactly. So just don't make that many details in the beginning. I you see I had this nice little belfry here. Again, I just put one arch on top of the other, like this, resized it, pulled it down. And then I threw one of those furnaces up there and kind of resized that. And you can see there's a little gray uh, block back there that's kind of filling that spot in. Just like uh, this is right here. So, yeah, so you get the principle here. I think you kind of understand how you can uh, design things there. So I hope this has kind of uh, sparked your imagination. Yeah, so and that's going to be it for today um, as a tutorial. If you want more of these or other ideas, um, first of all, there are other tutorials on how to make games in Struct, um, actual technical stuff on like how, how do you make like a victory gate and things like that, which for the record, it's ridiculously simple. That's why I love this game. It's just so simple design stuff. So anyway, if you want to uh, have more tutorials, there's other people on YouTube that have tutorials. You can go check them out. Um, if you want me to make more tutorials, I'd be happy to just post in the comments if you want that. So that's going to be it for today, guys. I am Kmart Commander. See you later.